Hi everyone. This video is different from the previous videos on my YouTube channel. On the previous videos, I was using mainly vector data. In this video, I'll be working on raster data. The purpose of this video is to explain the following. First, how to load a DEM raster data into Python. DEM stands for Digital Elevation Model. DEM raster, for those who are not familiar, is a raster storing elevation values. Second, how to illustrate basic attributes of the loaded DEM raster. Third, how to create two new rasters using the loaded DEM raster. The two new rasters will have values for slope and aspect, respectively. A slope value in a pixel represents steepness, usually in angular degrees ranging from 0 to 90 degrees. A high slope value indicates a steep terrain, and a low value indicates a flatter terrain. Regarding the aspect raster, a pixel value basically represents the direction of the slope, ranging from 0 to 360 degrees. So for example, in a specific location, if a pixel has a slope value of 75 degrees and a pixel has an aspect value of 180 degrees, this means the area in the given location is steep and the steepness is toward the south. In another example, if the slope value is 75 degrees and the aspect value is 355 degrees, this means it's steep but the steepness is toward the north. Such values can be used in applications such as watershed delineation and flood management. Fourth, we will create random vector points and assign these points the attributes of elevation, slope, and aspect using the three rasters. Finally, we will export the created points into two outputs, shapefile and geojson. All right, now I will talk about the Python libraries. I'll be using raster.io, rich dem, geopandas, and shapely. Raster.io is a library built using gdal and numpy. It is used mainly to read and write raster data. Rich DEM is a library offering DEM analysis functionality. GeoPandas is an extension of Pandas, the very well-known data analysis library in Python. GeoPandas extends Pandas data frames to use a geometry data type and to run geospatial analysis. And the Shapely library is used here to create the point objects for GeoPandas. In this video, I'm using Jupyter Notebook to illustrate the steps. Before I start, I would like to mention one thing about printing output on Jupyter Notebook. When you write a Python script, let's say for example using Sublime or Visual Studio Code, if you want to print the last element of a list, you will write print my list index negative 1. But in Jupyter Notebook, you don't have to do that. You can just type my list index negative 1. This doesn't mean that the print statement does not work on Jupyter Notebook. So in other words, Jupyter Notebook acts in printing output as a Python interactive shell environment. I left comments here to help you understand each step. The comments in Jupyter Notebook can be added in what is called markdown style. Let us start. So here, we are importing the packages we need. This line enables plots to be displayed on Jupyter Notebook. In this line of code, I'm creating a raster.io dataset object using the geotiff file called Medina on the same path of this notebook. Running this cell. Okay. Okay, it was loaded without any errors. By the way, this is the geotiff file we're using. Now, let's check the coordinate system assigned to the geotiff file. So, this is the CRS value, and as you probably know, it is for WGS84. Here, the count attribute will tell us how many bands we have in the GeoTIFF file. In the DEM file, we have only one band. All right, now let's see the bounds of the DEM file. Let me scroll up. So these are the bounds of the raster IO dataset. And height and width are... So as you can see, the raster has the same number of rows and columns. Now I can plot the DEM raster using the plot module in raster IO. This is the plot and later I will use rich DEM's plotting option. Okay, next I will create band1 object using the read method. The output of the read method is a numpy array and I am converting the values in band1 to float. 
I need to do this because rich DEM needs float values to create the slope and aspect. Now from band 1, I can get the pixel value of row 1 and column 5. Remember, band 1 is basically a NumPy array. So this is the value. I can also get the longitude and latitude coordinates for the pixel in row 1 and column 5. But I can do that with the raster IO dataset object, not the band 1, since band 1 is only a NumPy array. Okay, now we are starting to use rich DEM package. So first thing, I'm creating a rich DEM object on this line of code. Rich DEM accepts an input of NumPy array, which is here band 1. In this cell, I'm plotting the rich DEM object using rich DEM RD show method. Right here, this means that the minimum elevation in the raster is 490 meters and the highest is 1245. The CMAP attribute is for coloring palettes. You can Google more palettes if you are interested to try them out. Next, we can create the slope raster from the rich DEM object. This attribute says slope degrees. There are other methods in the rich DEM package to represent slope, for instance, in radian and percentage. I think it's easier for us to interpret degree values in our mind. But if you want, you can explore the other options. Let's plot the slope raster now. I'm using a different color palette, yellow to brown. The low yellow values are for flatter pixels, while the brown values are for more steep ones. Now we can create the aspect raster. As you can see, I updated the method to aspect. Don't worry about those. These are only warnings. They are not errors. Let's plot the aspect. So for example, the orange pixels are mostly west slope values, since a perfect west direction should be 270 degrees. We are almost done. In this cell, I'm creating a Python dictionary of four lists, elevation, slope, aspect, and geometry. We need this dictionary to generate the random points along with their attributes. GeoPandas accepts a Python dictionary in this format as an input to create a GeoPandas data frame. This for loop will create distant points. Now we're creating the GeoPandas data frame, no errors. Finally, we're exporting the GeoPandas data frame into two formats, shapefile and GeoJSON. So this is GeoJSON and this is shapefile. This is the Jupyter's notebook folder I'm working on. So as you can see, this is the notebook, this is the GeoTIFF file, and this is the new shapefile and the new GeoJSON file. Okay, now let's see the output on QGIS. I can click Add, Vector, and I'll select the GeoJSON file. Open, Add. Let me change the symbology. If I open the attribute table, so as you can see, three columns, elevation, slope, and aspect for each point. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something here. If you have any questions, please let me know.